All right. I think I got it. All right, so let's talk about maintenance systems, okay? What are they? There's four systems here, okay? So we're not going to be studying structural things, okay? We're not going to be doing bones, joints, muscles, blood vessels, nerves right now. We're going to pick up four of the systems in the human body. We've, just, we've studied through the basic elements of the integumentary system, the muscular system, the uh, skeletal system, touched on elements there. Now we want to pick up these four systems that belong together. What, what are they? The four maintenance systems are these. The urinary system. Now you know from our dissection of the cat, we've, we've seen kidneys. We've seen the ureter. We've seen the urinary bladder. Got a concept of this. The respiratory system. Again, in our dissection of the cat, we've seen the lungs, we've seen the trachea, okay, we've seen some basic elements here. The digestive system, quite a bit in the digestive system. We found the stomach and the liver and the pancreas and all the intestines. Seen all those major structures. You've got a concept of what, what this is about. Cardiovascular system, we saw the heart in the cat. Okay, and we've seen major blood vessels now as well. So we've, we've seen all of these elements. Now these four systems, and again, the organs for these four systems are all found here in this ventral cavity. These four systems work together to provide a very important service to your body. These four systems maintain the life of the cells in your human body. I've said this before, and this should be sort of a mantra now. I am alive because my cells are alive. I am a cellular organism. Everything that I do as a human being is a cellular process. How do you sustain the life of 70 trillion cells? We talked about how big that number is. How do the little cells down inside my bones or the cells inside my muscles or the cells inside my brain, how do they survive? How do they live? Well, it's really these four systems that are responsible for that. Let's put it like this. These four systems... Sustain cellular life by supplying raw materials to, okay? If these cells are going to survive, they have to have raw materials. There are gases that they need. There are, is a fuel that they need. They, if they're going to do their living thing, they've got to have some materials to do that with. Um, it's, it's not too hard to sort of compare this to like the running of your automobile. You know, what does it take to make your car go? Well, you've got to have fuel, don't you? And you may or may not know it, but air has got to come in as well. Under the hood there, there's an air intake. You might know that you've got an air filter there to get all the dust and dirt out of the air. But if you choke off the air intake into your engine, it won't run. Same thing here. Basic raw materials that these cells need to survive, to live. Okay? Now there's something else. They, they have to be supplied with raw materials and we have to remove waste products from them. Just like that automobile that uses fuel and air to run its engine to produce the power to make the car go, there is a waste product from that engine coming out the tailpipe, and it is poisonous. You breathe too much of it, and you'll die. The same exact kind of thing is happening to the cells in your human body. 
The cells in your human body are producing waste products. If those waste products accumulate, they will poison the cells to death. So we also have to be able to remove waste products and get them away from the cells. So each and every little cell is doing this. It needs raw materials and it needs to have its waste products dealt with. And these four systems are responsible for that. Okay? These four systems are what do that. Here's another way to sort of picture this. These systems are like the entrances and the exits from the human body. Not only that, but they're also the transportation system within your human body. You have to get raw materials in, like oxygen, let's say, or like your food. Somehow those materials need to get in. How do those materials get into the little cells here in the bone in one of my finger? Well, I know food enters. I, I eat my food and the digestive system does something with it. I know I breathe air into my lungs, but then how does it get from my lungs or my digestive system to here? There has to be a transportation system, doesn't there? There's got to be some way to move those raw materials from where they enter my body to all the living cells within me. So these four systems are functioning as the entrances to my human body for raw materials and the exits from my human body for waste products and as a transportation system within my human body. And each one of these four systems has a specific role to play. Okay? So this handout diagrams that. You can see in various places all four systems listed within this picture. So let's, let's just kind of familiarize you with how each one of these systems functions with its partners, and then we'll take the systems one at a time and look at them in more detail. So probably the central system to this whole thing is the cardiovascular system. Okay, when you think of cardiovascular, I hope you think of your heart and your blood vessels. You know, think of of what goes on when we need to transport things within our human body because the one key term here is transportation. The cardiovascular system is your transportation system. You know, how do goods and things get moved around our world? Well, we have a system of roads and we have lots of vehicles, lots of trucks and things, maybe railroads. We load goods on those and they take them from place to place. Cardiovascular system functions like that in my human body. How does the food get from where my intestines to the bones in my little finger? The cardiovascular system picks them up and gets them to where they need to, to be used. Now, transportation is key. If transportation broke down, there wouldn't be any food in the supermarket, right? There wouldn't be any things for you to buy in the store. Transportation is key. And we've seen that there are, um, within the cardiovascular system, the heart that powers this whole thing. And then we've got arteries and we have veins, right? We've got these tubes that function kind of like the roads in our human body to get materials from one place to another. So cardiovascular system is really at the center of all of this, getting things from where they are to where they need to be. Okay. So all the pickup and delivery you know takes place here. And I, I I think it's very, very easy to just say this is so much like ours our own system of getting things from here to there. This is what happens in your human body. Does every house Every building, every place somebody works, does it have a road to it? Doesn't it? I mean, even if you live out to the country, there's a road to your house. Is it? I mean, unless you're a hermit and you backpack all of your food into some little cabin in the woods, 
but literally every place does, right? Because we need to deliver things everywhere. So every place that you and I live and work, if we were the cells of our society, there are roads to our places. And the same thing is true in the human body. Every single cell, okay, every cell in your human body has got a blood vessel for it. Everyone lives near a blood vessel. When you look at pictures under the microscope, doesn't matter which tissues you're looking at, when you see cells, you're going to see little blood vessels running nearby. Because without supplying materials, you're in bad shape. And, and this is tough because unlike you and me, I can go to the store, I can go wherever I need to go to get my needs met. Most of the cells in your human body are locked into place, aren't they? So if it isn't brought to them, they don't survive. These, uh, this is loose connective tissue here, cells or uh, tissue here, and the cells that you see in this picture, right, if it isn't brought to them, they die. What if somebody came around and locked us all in our homes last night? Government comes around, locks everybody in their homes and says, from now on, you've got to live from inside your home. Okay? Could you survive? Yeah, for, for the most part, I mean, we've got, we've got all this good, you know, cable television, all this stuff, so we can get information in and out. Not, not that that's essential for survival, but all of our houses are typically built with good water supply and good waste removal, right? What would be the one thing that we would just have to have a better transportation system for? Food, right? Dominoes would just last so long, right, before, before we get pretty old. So we'd probably, instead of having supermarkets, we'd, we'd have to have supermarkets that deliver to our houses and bring food to us every day. But if they did, if you had your food, if you had water, if you had the air to breathe, if you had waste products removed from your house, you could survive there. And that's what's happening with the cells in your human body. Everything has to be brought to them, and waste products have to be removed from them. Okay, so this is a challenge. Every cell in the human body has to live near a blood vessel so deliveries can be made to it. Okay? The blood vessels then are like the highways of the human body, aren't they? These, these are like your roads, highways, streets. There are big ones like freeways in your body, like the aorta is like a mega freeway. But then there are little branches leading off into every little residential street. Think of it like our highways where we've got freeways, we've got main roads, highways, but most houses and apartments are on little residential streets. Same thing happens here. There are big ones and small ones. Okay, the blood is like the vehicles then. The vehicles are what carry the goods, right? Your blood, the blood has dissolved into it all of the things that your cells need. They pass from like your respiratory system or your digestive system into the blood and the blood itself carries those raw materials and waste products. You know, we have trucks like that might go to the supermarket but we've also got trash trucks. Waste products are also, but the blood is the vehicle. And then the heart powers the whole thing. Right? The heart creates a pressure that forces the blood through the tubes. So unlike our vehicles, which are self-powered, the blood is not self-powered. It's powered by the heart. So the heart drives the blood through the tube so that the blood reaches every single cell in the human body. Right? So if you, if you pictured it like this, if you needed to get from the freeway to one of your house, to your house over here, you'd get off on a main highway here. You'd travel some larger roads. You'd finally get off on the little residential streets. Now, the blood vessels leading away from the heart are just like this. The farther and farther you go, the smaller and smaller they become. And finally, there are little tiny blood vessels near all of the cells in your human body. 
So the cardiovascular system is about transportation. Okay? Now, if you think of the branching of a tree from the main trunk of the tree out to the leaves, the branches get more and more numerous. They get smaller and smaller. Finally, you have all of the, the needs of the little leaves delivered to them through all the branches of the tree. Okay, so we've got this cardiovascular system. I hope we understand now that it's transporting raw materials. But we've got to be able to get raw materials into the system for them to transport. Um, I like to use the metaphor, the physical metaphor of solids, liquids, and gases. Have you learned this at some point? Maybe elementary school or junior high or something? Everything in our world that we deal with commonly is either in the form of a solid, a liquid, or a gas, isn't it? And if I take the raw materials that your human body needs and divide them up into these three components, my human body, all the cells of my body need some gases, like oxygen. Oxygen is critical. I need a liquid. I need water. Water, you know, two-thirds of my body is water. And I get rid of a little bit of that water every day to help get rid of some of my waste products. So I need to constantly have an inflow of a liquid. And then the solids, the, the fuels that power my body are typically found in solids that we call foods. So how do I, how do I get those in? Well, I've got to get some gases. I've got to get some liquids in. And I've got to find a way to get solids in as well. So there, these other three systems, we know cardiovascular transports, the other three systems are the entrances and the exits from the body. Now, how does a substance get into you? Right? Here's a digestive system. Right? You've got to understand that for anything to enter the human body, it has to cross through a membrane. Okay? So if, here's some material, say, in my stomach. Okay? If I'm going to send that up to the top of my head or out to my fingertips or wherever, it's got to pass from there through a membrane to get into my body. So we're going to see lots and lots of membranes associated with these entrances and exits. And the substances have to be simple enough right, that they can cross the membrane. Big, complex substances cannot get through the epithelial tissues of my body. So we've got a couple of challenges here. Now let's look at these two systems. The entrances to my human body are two systems. Gases come into me through the respiratory system. Okay, that's the purpose of my respiratory system is to get gases into my bloodstream, into my, into my cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system will then take care of moving those things where they need to go. Liquids and solids both enter through the same system, the digestive system. And so these two systems are the doorways into my body. Nothing gets in me in any other way, typically. My skin is built so that things don't get through it. But I have epithelial tissues in these two systems deep down inside me where things can cross. Now only, as I said before, only very, very simple molecules can cross a membrane to get into me. Gases are very simple, so they can cross. Liquids are very simple, so they can cross. The tough one is solids. How do I get solids to cross a membrane? And that's why I have digestion. If everything I ate was very, very simple, I really wouldn't need a digestive system. 
but it's the fact that so much of my food is in a complex form that can't go across a membrane that I need a digestive system. And sometimes we say that digestion breaks down food. I don't like to use that word breaks down because when I break something, then I usually throw it in the trash. The food that I eat, if it got broken, wouldn't be any good to me, if you will. So it's better to say it like this. There are some foods that dissolve easily, aren't there? If I put a teaspoon of sugar into a glass of water and stir, it's gone, isn't it? Is it gone? No? How do you know it's still there? Huh? Taste it, right? I can taste the water and I can sense that the sugar is there. It hasn't disappeared, isn't gone. Well, it's, it's disappeared to where you can't see it, but it's still there, right? But it's dissolved. The sugar molecules can dissolve into the water. They become small enough that I can't see them, and yet they can cross through a membrane now because they're so small. Other things that I might want to eat do not, right? Here's a big kludgy sandwich, right? Can I put that in the glass of water, stir it around, and it'll dissolve? Huh? But the bread will just dissolve. Over time? No, not even over time. Not if I even put this in a blender and grind it up, right? It's just going to be a kludgy mass of food in some water, okay? This does not dissolve naturally. What does my digestive system do then? Digestion takes complex foods like this and makes them dissolve, If I put the right digestive enzymes in with this sandwich and mix it up, slowly but surely, the sandwich and all of its elements dissolves in the water. Now the molecules are so small that they can cross through membranes. So it's, a, it's better to say that the digestive system is making food dissolvable. Okay? Okay so that it can cross those membranes. And this is how we get these raw materials in. I've got two systems that specialize in just one thing, getting raw materials into the cardiovascular system so that they can be delivered. Okay, how about the exits then? What I know about the cells in my human body is just like little automobiles, they're producing an exhaust. They're producing a poisonous waste product. Actually, two poisonous waste products. One is a gas, okay? And so the respiratory system functions not only as an entrance, but also as an exit for gases. Anybody know what that poisonous gas is? Say it loud. Carbon dioxide, right? I utilize oxygen within my cells to produce energy. The waste product that comes out is carbon dioxide. And in too great a level, it's poisonous. Um, I don't know if, has anybody seen um, Apollo 13? Ever see that movie? It was about an accident. Great, great. If you haven't seen it, it's a great movie, very tense. Um, Apollo 13, they send astronauts. They're supposed to go out and land on the moon. Partway out to the moon, something breaks, and they lose a bunch of their oxygen. Now they're out in the middle of space, and, what, and they're heading for the moon, and they've just lost a, quite a bit of their resources to stay alive. How are they going to get back to Earth? And the whole movie is about how, how to do that. They did have enough extra oxygen in their space capsule, that that would be fine. But the thing that they couldn't uh, work with was the fact that they couldn't get rid of all the carbon dioxide. They were, they were breathing out carbon dioxide constantly, and the carbon dioxide levels were rising. They didn't have a way to deal with that. And so they had to find some way that they could reduce them so that they would stay alive because you, when the carbon dioxide levels get too high, you start hallucinating and then you start 
wigging out and the carbon dioxide poisons you to where you can't function. So, so the respiratory system is not only the entrance but the exit for gases, oxygen in, CO2 out. Now the other one is for liquids, the dissolved sub substances here. The urinary system then is the exit for all those dissolved waste products. All the, all the waste products from the cells dissolve in water and those waste products are then eliminated by the urinary system. 24 hours a day, your kidneys are filtering out those liquid waste products. So three systems, two here that function as exit entrances, two here that function as exits, and then a system to move everything around the human body. These are what sustain your cellular life. These are really at the center of health care. Your human body is really very good at healing itself when it's broken, when there's something wrong. Under normal circumstances, our, body are very good, our bodies are very good at that. But sometimes we're in a critical state where we just have to keep somebody alive long enough that their body can fix itself. And these four systems are at the center of that. If something goes wrong in one of these systems, life is at a critical standpoint. Now you can be in big, big trouble when one of these systems go. And so people that are in medical care spend a lot of time studying these systems, you know, to try to get people to where they can stay alive long enough that their body can fix itself. Um, I'm wondering if there's anything, any waste product here that we didn't talk about? Did we overlook anything here? We got the gases, we got the liquids. How about solid waste? Do solid waste come out through your urinary system? No. Yeah, how about fecal matter? Where does that fit in this whole picture? Hmm? Where does fecal matter fit within this? You know where it is? It's right here. Okay, and what you have to know is it really never got into the system in the first place. Okay, what you and I think of as solid waste is really not so much a waste product. It's not like an exhaust. It's not like the byproduct of an energy producing system, right? This just happens to be the same stuff that went in your mouth hours ago without the nutrients, right? It's not made specially, it's just the leftovers. You put the food in, your digestive system simplifies or does, makes all the stuff dissolvable. You take out what you need, but there's always some of what you eat that isn't usable for you. And so what is unusable passes out the other end of you. It isn't really nasty until it gets to the large intestine. Your large intestine have lots of bacteria in there, and they really eat everything up that you didn't absorb, that you didn't use. All the leftovers get chomped on by the bacteria, and those bacteria then produce their own waste products. And so it's really the bacterial waste products that make this so nasty. But you want to see this as leftovers, not really an exhaust, not really a poisonous waste product that's the byproduct of energy production. I want to say this stuff was never in you in the first place. Does that make sense? Sometimes that, that doesn't resonate with people. What you have to realize, and, and I want to just take your thinking and twist it a little bit right here, see if you can put your head around this. There are many spaces inside you that are truly not inside you. And here's a good way to illustrate that with a piece of food. Ever had one of these? 
Sure, probably everybody's had a donut at one point in their life, right? There's a donut here, and it's got a hole in it, doesn't it, right? What if I take and put my finger in the hole? Okay, is my finger in the donut? Yes, no, yes. What is the donut? Is the donut... Is the donut the hole? The hole is just a space, isn't it? The donut is the cake, isn't it? So if I put my finger in the donut like that, if I put it in the hole, is it in the donut? It's not, is it? How would you describe the relationship between my finger and the donut? The donut, my finger passes through. The donut is surrounding my finger, right? Is around my finger. My finger's in an empty space. To get my finger in the donut, what would I have to do? I'd have to poke through the surface there somewhere, right? Now, you can make this. Now, relate this to your human body, right? Can you visualize yourself as... um, How about a stack of donuts? Well, maybe you don't want to think of yourself as a stack of donuts. But if you think of a stack of donuts, there's a tube running through the stack of donuts, isn't there? Right? And anything you put down in that tube, is it in the donut? No. Now think of yourself, think of your human body. You've got a tube running through you from your mouth to your anus. Anything that goes in that tube, is it in your body? Technically, no, right? Your body is surrounding it, but if you don't absorb it, if it doesn't come through the surface somewhere, it never is inside you, right? Swallow a nickel, right? Put a strainer on the toilet, and you know, in 24, 36 hours, right, you can get your nickel back. It went through you. Your body surrounded it the whole way. But at some point, it just comes out the same way it came in. It was never inside you, okay? It was never inside you. You were just surrounding it for a period of time. And this is real important. I mean, this this is a different way of thinking for us, but we do have to think. Nothing is, is inside me until it comes through the membranes of my human body, okay? So that's, that's the principle here. The digestive system, the respiratory system is a bunch of tubes and passageways deep inside your body. But even at that, nothing is in you until it crosses a membrane, right? You can s- see it like this, right? If this pink stuff was your human body, right, the food goes in, right? And not until it passes through the walls here of the tube does it become a part of you. And you take out what you want, and then the rest of it is going to come out as your waste product. But the hollow tube that runs through you is surrounded by you, but is not really in you. Okay? Not really in you. Yes. Same thing. Yeah. How about with a medication was the question. If I put a medication in, if it never dissolves, what if the coating around the medication is so tough that I can't dissolve it? I'm going to find that pill in the toilet one day. It will have passed through my body. You, if you want somebody to have a medication, you want to make sure that that thing is dissolvable, right? That your digestive process will dissolve it. That medication has to pass through the walls, and then it will get into your bloodstream, and your bloodstream will then transport it to all parts of your human body. Okay? So, when you think of entrances and exits, I want you to be thinking of two things, and we'll reiterate this later. You've got to be thinking of passageways. There's always tubes and passageways to get the outside materials deep within your body. 
and then there's always lots and lots of membrane surface to allow materials to cross. When I think of urinary, respiratory, and digestive, I'm always thinking lots of passageways and membranes. Those are the biggies. Okay? So, here are, this whole picture here then gives you that whole layout for how these four systems relate and interact with one another. Everybody good with that? Okay. All 